Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Sage Lewis, and right next to me is my man, John Haney. How's it going, John? Going great, Sage. <laughs> Glad to join you this afternoon. Man, this. This, this is a revolution. This is a brand new thing, finally. Like, you know, isn't it amazing the kind of technology we can do, like, in the 21st century? I mean, like, we have, like, a mini video studio here. It's awesome. I love this. And the great thing is we, we can do this from our iPhone, from our iPad. Yeah, and, I know, and man. I, I, it doesn't matter. And, and it doesn't matter where you are anymore either. That's the other beautiful thing. Yeah. It's where, as long as I got a Wi-Fi signal, you and I can chat. And the great thing is, you know, and we, we did one of these before, uh, your, your weekly marketing <laughs> webcasts. Yeah. And what I love about it is we're talking about topics that were non-existent even five years ago. Yeah. And these are technologies and technology platforms that are absolutely transforming the entire world of marketing, yeah. of promotion, of business. And they, they are opening up such fabulous creative avenues to yeah. reach people and connect with people. And today is another great time. And one yeah. of the newest, hottest, topics out there sage why don't you introduce it pinterest baby the what is this is john is this the fastest growing website ever is that what that, you've heard that, that's what I, I i read this morning and you know i'm doing the up to the minute research that reached 10 million users faster than any website in history yeah and you and, know uh, now and it's being dismissed and and for those who don't know what pinterest is it's an online pin board. And imagine, you know, when you were back in your dorm in, in college and your, your wall was, you know, you had, you had this big cork board, you know, next to your desk, and you would just pin stuff that you were interested in. There were photos and there were ads and there were maybe magazine pages or things ripped out of uh, related to courses you were taking yep. but you just had things pinned around you because you thought they were cool yep i used to do that did you do that absolutely yeah hey we lived in a analog <laughs> age back then Sage. i know <laughs> but the world's different now and now we're in a digital age and all day long whenever you encounter something that you find interesting with a couple of clicks you can pin it Yep. And you can pin it to your pin board. Other people that you're connected with socially can see it and they can click through to find it. Yeah. And, and, and that's the amazing part of this. Like, like anything in the social media age, we, you, you get to share it. So, so, you know, we have this, we, we've, we've had boards, right, in our home that we can pull pictures out of magazines and put those up and that sort of thing. But the awesome part of this now is that you can share these things with anybody you want. And so it's not just in your bedroom or your, you know, or wherever you keep that thing. It's, you know, you get to let people know who you are as a human being. Well, and, and you know, we wanted to talk today especially about how does this apply to business? Yeah. Um, okay, I get it. College kids can pin up you right. know, yeah, the, the latest Justin Bieber photo and the latest uh, you know, Jennifer Lopez song. And the, all, right. all right, all right, they can pin. But what does that have to do with me? You know, I'm a mm -hmm. professional. What I do, I do to pursue my profession. How does this fit? You yeah. Know, and, and now, so there are a lot of people who are kind of dismissive about pin because, first of all, it's used predominantly by women right. so and it is used people look at it and they dismiss it like they dismissed facebook in the early days oh it's just college kids yeah college kids kind of talking about what they did last night what they're having for breakfast whether but what pin Pinterest allows you to do and i'm gonna i'm gonna go go out here to and share my screen here to one of the one of my favorite business to business companies, which is HubSpot. Hmm. And I am sharing my screen here. 
Ta da! Do you see it? I think it's coming. I, I sense the. I sense it. It's uh. Ooh. There we go. There. Hey, that's okay. me. <laughs> so HubSpot <laughs> is a B two B firm, and they you know they have software that helps businesses do digital marketing and track social media activity, and what they so they created their own pin board and fun orange things, which uh, now I've got to create one because I brand <laughs> around the color orange. They, I'll let them appropriate that for, for the moment. But what they put on their, on their pin board is their eBooks, um, marketing data, and they, they, they promote and they produce a wealth of marketing data for social media people. And so if I go, go to their pin board for marketing data, they put all their latest information in here okay so you know what's the best social network for lead generation now if I click through this it'll actually take me to their website and to their search so I'm finding the data back on their on their pin board and I can look at and they do great infographics and anything I, I click here, I track the original research. It's the pure B two B play stage. So this yeah. is this isn't trying to reach consumers with you know pretty dresses or floral arrangements. This is a B two B play. If, if you can use a social media site to promote your business to other businesses, then you've got a good business play here. Yeah. So their marketing data, their marketing infographics, yeah, and just, just kind of cute things, fun arts things, things with spots. And here's an interesting one, Sage, the behind the scenes. People will always do business with people they know and they like. Mm. That's how the world works. It, it's how it's always worked. Right. Well, how do you connect with a... a I, I can't connect with HubSpot, but... I can connect with people at HubSpot. I can connect with their engineers, with their marketers, with their researchers. And so they're giving me this, this inside look into this is who we are. This is where we work. You know, the, the, here's our, you know, where we went to dinner at the trade show last week. It opens this, it opens this little door to give this behind the scenes look so they can create and generate a closer connection with their business clients. Yep, yep. And so this is what's interesting if you ask me, John. I, you know, I, I, I just wrote a blog piece today on the Sage Rock blog about, um, it was inspired by a meeting I had this week and it sounded like maybe you had a similar meeting <laughs> this week where somebody, some guy came, you know, a, a business owner came to me and said, look, Sage, I'm really, um, I am really um, not believing in social media. And um, oh, just so you know, John, I turned off my video. I was having some internet problems, but... Um, everything's going fine otherwise I mean <laughs> my oh my internet you would think at an internet company I would have good internet but uh, surprisingly not but at any rate I mean it's interesting you know I'm still having people come to me and say look Sage I don't think this is right for my clients my clients don't think that social media is is right for for them and you know he gives examples he's like oh well you know um, HVAC contractors, they're not on Facebook. Um, attorneys, they're not on Facebook. Accountants, they're not on Facebook. These are people that are too busy for social media. And, you know, have you had similar kinds of conversations? Look, I, I have that identical conversation <laughs> with virtually every company, every CEO, every senior executive that I talk with. And, <laughs> and to them, you know, what I, what I say is, <clears throat> first of all, People spend more time online engaged with assorted social media platforms than anything else. Mm. It is the number one activity online. Um, I use Facebook. I have a monitor dedicated to my Facebook and Twitter feeds. Yeah. And it's up all day. Yep. And people initially don't believe me when I say my Facebook page is 
98.5% professional. I'm, yep. I'm not connecting with, with friends and college roommates and family and, and getting birthday photos. No, I'm connecting with people who are on all day sharing articles, sharing insight, sharing their business stories, connecting with other other people in the same lines of work. And the same thing on Twitter. I've built relationships. And look, you and I met. How did we meet? Yep. Twitter. I mean, this whole thing happened on Twitter. That you, you meet other people that, that 10 years ago, you were restricted to who you connected with professionally by geography. You know, if you lived in Omaha, you connected with other Omaha SEO professionals, social media professionals. That, that's it. That's all you could do. Um, yeah. But now you connect with people all over the country. And by connecting with them through the social media channels, you see them a little bit at a time. They mm -hmm. reveal themselves one post at a time, one post at a time. And you, you really can glean who's good, who's bright, who's bringing something to the game. Who, do, who really brings value to your business day? So people are online, they, they do connect. And from the business owner's perspective, the thing you need to determine is what platform is the most effective. Yeah, so that's so interesting. I will absolutely agree, not everyone needs to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. You don't. Right. Um, you know, if, if you're a B to C play, if, if, if you're, you know, for example, uh, you know, a, a wedding, Wedding Republic, who, by the way, we'll take a look at because they have a, a great Pinterest page. They don't need to be on LinkedIn. They don't. What's that going to do to help them drive sales? But if they're not on Pinterest, if they're not on Facebook, then they're losing the ability to connect and engage. And that's what most of these business owners don't understand is the entire equation has changed. No one wants you to pitch to them anymore. Yep. They do, however, want to connect, and if you deliver real value, they'll engage with you. You have conversations, and those conversations turn into business transactions. Yep. Yeah, and that's what's interesting, I think, is that you've said a couple interesting things. So, I mean, many, but, but a couple that jumped out at me. You know, first of all, it is, you know, it is not some sort of just like new fangled technology. It is, it is, it is what we've been doing all along. I mean, you know, for some reason, you take the savviest business owner who knows that he was getting deals. He was selling, you know, major things on the golf course. He was selling them in, in, uh, you know, like strip joints and, you know, taking people out to to dinner and vacations. You know, this the same person that was making their business out of these relationships, and suddenly you put them in front of like Facebook or Pinterest or something, and they're all of a sudden like, whoa, that's not for me. You know, that's that's for kids. And and it, it I I think that they're just not. I don't think that they they get it in their heart yet that it's it is networking by other means you know it is it is something it that is it, it, it because and again i mean people always do business with people they like yes and you learn to like people you grow into relationships and look and and what i all i can say to to those ceos who say you know what this is the social media area isn't going to contribute anything as you know i'll steal olivier blanchard's tagline pray that i don't work with your competitor right that's right and you know something about ceos i um i have a theory that ceos are going to be starting to ask really hard questions of their cmos and they're going to start saying look what is our online strategy in this social landscape and so the people that I think are going to get started to bear down on are the CMOs. That these are the guys and gals, these you know men and women. That if they don't get it, they're going to be out of a job. And I think I lost you. No, wait, there you are. <laughs> Take a look at, at, at Pinterest now. So, how ca how can a business use Pinterest to connect? And first of all, it's you need to understand that Pinterest like look the, the web is a visual medium and pinterest is uses these visuals to allow you to tell a story and to connect 
and to get people excited. And so what's important now is that you need to, if, if we have some, some kind of guidance for, for what to do and how to use it, first of all, is no matter what you post as a business, to your blog, to you know, any type of article, anything you put up online, you've got to include images. And they have to be good images. Yeah. And it's funny, I was thinking about this since going back, looking at former blog posts and saying, yeah, some of those images I got to redo because yeah. I posted the blog post in a pre-Pinterest era. But if someone wants to share what they just read about, for example, you, you had a post earlier this week about Pinterest. Yeah. If I were to post that, and they call it pinning it, yeah. if I wanted to pin it, there needs to be a compelling graphic yes. that would catch someone's eye to make them read the tagline that I put under it to make them click through to discover Sage Lewis. Yes, so that's right. Rule number one now, and the, you know, the world, the web has changed. Images are now more important than virtually anything else. Yeah, and videos I'm including as part of images because you can post videos. You can pin videos to Pinterest, but you've now you've got to include images in everything you post. Yeah. And secondly, it's and so how do you how do you do it? Um, well, Pinterest has made it pretty easy, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pop to my screen again and say share screen, share. <laughs> And there we go. All right. And so he says, one of my favorite sites just for gear and tech and cool stuff is Uncrate. And Uncrate, just great visuals. Now, here is the new Ferrari California. Now, hmm. the, just the sexiest car on the planet. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Now, I see this. This this appeals to my sense of design and technology and my auto enthusiasm. When I see this picture now, one of the first things I do is I click on my little toolbar in my browser and I say pin it. Yeah. Now Pinterest has enabled, it will pull every image off this site. There's a lot of cool things on this site. And I simply highlight the one I want and tell it to pin it. Yeah. Um, it asks me to log in. I'm going to log in with my Facebook account and then it asks me what board do I want to put it on. Yeah. Cool stuff, stunning. I'm going to go with stunning design. Right on. You can tag, you know, put something in. I can include names in here. Whoops, type correctly. I want one. All right, <laughs> now, I could have also put this on my birthday wish list board, but I'm thinking that wouldn't be that effective. And that's it. It's, yeah. it's done. Now it's, it's pinned to my board. So now other people will come, they'll see this, they'll click it, they'll share it with others. And what you're doing is establishing some interests that you have to let you connect with someone else. Now, who knows, Sage, which one of your prospects or which one of your clients is a total Ferrari aficionado? Yes. Loves for Now, you've just pinned something, you've revealed something about yourself that lets you connect with that person. They get to comment and say, you know, when I've owned three Ferraris in my life, or and I, I posted something on my Twitter feed a few weeks ago. On my bucket list is one day, I want to, I want to drive a Ferrari. I've never driven one. Yeah, right on. That's on my bucket list. Yeah. Now we would have something to share. Yep. And that's the beauty of all these social channels. You get to connect in a way that, that's not just consulting and business and branding and marketing and emails, but you're connected on a human level. Yep. And yep. that's what these social media channels do. Now, what I'm trying to do, and this is rule number two now for Pinterest, is pin a lot of stuff steadily. Mm. So. Don't do huge grab bags of, I'm going to pin 42 things and then do nothing for a week. Now, try to pin three or four things a day. But do it every day. Keep this steady flow up. 
and repin stuff that you see other people pin to get those connections going. And just like Twitter and just like LinkedIn and just like Facebook, you don't see the return when you start. You see the return as you become involved. Yes. As you connect with others. The connections will start building and building and building. Um, and if you have a blog, and Sage, I know you do, and Sage, is your blog built on WordPress? Yeah, it sure is. Because now there is a Pinterest widget hmm. that lets you, that will show your latest pins, just like I include my latest Twitter feed, my latest Facebook feed on my blog itself, you can now put a widget on that'll show like the last three things you pinned to Pinterest. Nice. And so it's another way to get people to connect. Because here's the, the other thing that I, that I tell every CEO. You don't get to elect where you connect <laughs> with your clients and your prospects. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't get to say, I'm on LinkedIn, that's where you connect with me. No, that's not how it works. Right. You must be where they are. The, the rules have changed. You're not just broadcasting and pushing stuff out. Right. So now you've got to be where they say, this is where I live. I live on Facebook. Yep. Yeah. And for example, you and I both know a guy named George Nemeth. Yeah. yeah. Here in Cleveland. Well, George is a Facebook guy. Yep. He's not, he doesn't do Twitter and he doesn't do, if you want to engage with George, it's got to be on Facebook. That's where he is. Yep. So, and you've got other customers like that too. And who knows what plus, some live on LinkedIn and they think Facebook's ridiculous. Okay, I'm on LinkedIn too. But you've got to be where they are yep. or you simply won't connect and they get to pick w that venue. Yeah. And you know, it's, it, it, so as you mentioned, you know, the primary audience right now is women and you see a lot of fashion, you see a lot of um, wedding stuff, um, you know, a lot of food stuff. And it would seem to me that if you are in one of those industries, you, you have to be over here. I mean, you are, you are going to, you are going to lose market share by not participating, especially in those industries. Oh, oh yeah, and yeah, and yeah. You mentioned weddings. You know, one of the best um, Pinterest pages is, is Wedding Republic. Boy, do they get it! I mean, this look. Weddings are huge visual, yeah, you know, spectaculars. I mean, look at those bride magazines. My, my God, they're like twelve hundred pages thick. Yeah. And I don't know what's changed in weddings in the last fifty years, but holy cow! I mean, every every month they got another twelve hundred page magazine <laughs> detailing. <laughs> And it's all photos. Yes. It's all, all visual. It's dresses. It's flowers. It's groomsmen. And if you go to the Wedding Republic site, my God, they do a great job. Not only do they give register ideas, where to go on your honeymoon, um, your shoes. I know shoes are a huge issue with brides and bridesmaids. Yeah. So a whole board dedicated to, to shoes, which they update on their Tuesday. You know, obviously, wedding dresses for the groomsmen. Yep. And uh, uh, um, you know, something borrowed, some blue. Then yeah. you know, get to it and just photos that they allow their their people to connect with to share their yep. product, which which they do also. But it's, it's sharing these great visuals. And I, look, I, I got to believe that, uh, and you know, I, I saw today on Facebook that Danielle DeBeau, who is you know, the creator of, uh, of you know, Made in 216, uh, has a Dredger's Union store downtown Cleveland, is getting married, she's engaged, she's getting married. And um, she announced today she found her wedding dress. Look, I, I know every, she, if, she put, if she pinned a picture of her wedding dress, on her Pinterest board, that all these women that she connects with on Facebook would be heading right over to take a look at it. Yep, guaranteed, guaranteed. And then they look at other dresses. 
boxes and they'd comment on them. Well, I like this one. What do you think of this? And then they, then boom, it goes into, well, what about the bridesmaid dresses? Have you thought about that? What color are you thinking? And it sparks conversations and engagement. And ultimately, and here is from the businessman's perspective, what you want is if you pin one of your products and it's, for example, in your online catalog and you pin, you know, a pair of shoes, then when they click it, it can show the price and it'll take them back to your online catalog so they can actually buy it. Yeah, and that's where I think I am right now. I think I'm in the gifts section. And I was just going to ask you if you knew about this. So that's what's happening here. Huh? These people are, um, this is, these are images from somebody's catalog. Is that right? Exactly. Very interesting. So, I mean, that's got to be a no-brainer. I mean, it's, you know, you, you would, I would think you would want your images to, to, to be in here. <laughs> oh, ab absolutely. Yeah, unbelievable. So, yeah, so if you go to, you know, through, now not everyone is doing, not all retailers are doing it right yet. Yeah. Because you, there, there is some element of code that you have to attach so that, for example, there, there, is a, there would be a banner across the corner that gives its price and would click back yes. you know, so you could actually order this. Uh, but look, look, if I, I clicked on this wedding shoe and it took me right back to their page, and if I click here, I can order it from Neiman Marcus. Yep. So there it is, a $775 pair of wedding shoes. That's yep. a bargain, Sage. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> That's... <laughs> wow, a pair of Louboutins. Oh, yes. man. So, so for those people who are saying, well, you know, is, is it really for business? Look, the answer is yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, HubSpot has their ebooks, their marketing research, their infographics, their data, and their behind the scenes look, their human elements yeah. on their B2B site. Yeah. Then we have the, the people who provide wedding product pinning their materials to appropriate wedding boards are all across Pinterest. Yeah. And when you when a woman sees a pair of shoes that she absolutely loves, two clicks and they're buying it from you. Yeah. Now, yeah. To me, that's business. Yeah. I think you're right. I mean, it you know, the the the, the thing that overarching impresses me now is that this is not some sort of optional component for business. We are now in an era where the consumer, where the visitor is deciding this stuff. There, you know, if you don't want to be a part of Pinterest, then, you know, you're just, you have cut yourself out just like that, that uh, George Namath story. If you don't, you know, if you don't believe in Facebook, then you don't talk to George Namath. It's just, you know, and that is the world that we live in. And if you, you know, and I was, I was jotting down ideas and thinking, okay, if I, you know, you and I do business to business, right? And that, that, that's our, our professions are business to business. And you're thinking, well, and almost all my clients are, are B two B. So how do you, from that perspective, how can you use Pinterest? And I was thinking, pin up, um, you know, how to instructions and how to videos. Create a whole board. And that look, will this replicate stuff that you likely have on your website also? Yes. Yeah. So what? Yeah. So what? It, it put, spread these resources out. If someone discovers your Pinterest page and and you and, and they can discover how to how to do you know search engine optimization, hey, here are the five things you need to know to do keyword research. Yeah. And they can watch a fifteen minute video with you that they discover here. Yeah. What, why do you care that they discovered it on yeah. Pinterest instead of YouTube? Yeah, who cares? Or instead of your website. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. It's, they're connecting with you and they're giving, they're, they're, you're enabling them to discover you and discover your expertise. Yep. Um, create a case study board. Yep. I and mean, we all have success stories. And if you can tell your stories visually and incorporate visual elements, what spot? Uh, create online portfolios yeah. of all, you know, the design work that you've done, of the, the, of the project work you've done, and create and put portfolios online so people can see. And again, does this replicate something you might have on your website? Probably. Yeah. I would expect you wouldn't just put it on Pinterest. <laughs> right. But 
you put it up there because you don't know where people are going to discover you. Yeah. You know, something so you else that spread it out. Yeah, something else that interests me is, you know, I think about Google Doodles. So these Google Doodles have become a thing. And, you know, you um and and so they they they're featured in every, you know, every major day and even minor day it seems, yep. has a Google Doodle, and it is in the news every single time. You type in Valentine's Day, you know, you click on that Google Doodle, it goes to the word Valentine's Day, and there's like a Washington Post article about the Google Doodle. It's amazing. It's just, it's, it's free publicity for Google. And so I think that, you know, there, the, direct cons the direct idea is, well, you know, put up stuff that's currently on your website, or, or, you know, that pertains directly to your website, but you can have tangential things, right? I mean, you can have things that are just semi-related that, that, you know, maybe you're into, maybe you're an artist, or maybe you're a photographer, or maybe you just have pictures of, like, your, your dog or your family. I mean, I think for me, it's anything well, sure. that emotionally well, you know, connects. Stage, you know, when I, was, I was working with a technology company downtown um, last year, and I took my, my dog, Bailey, to work. Yeah. Most days. I have a, a black labradoodle who's asleep on the floor over here right now. <laughs> um, but Bailey became popular and it got his own Facebook page. And, and employees put pictures of him up all the time. Yeah. And, why, so, and then we would have clients come in and they'd be like, where's Bailey? Hey, I really want to meet Bailey. And, it, and again, it's, it's that opening the door behind the scenes. Yes. It says, you're not just this, this monolithic business and corporation. It's, look, you're all people. You're, you're friendly. You have a character. There's a corporate culture that you get to share and reveal and give insight to in a way that a static web page can't do. Yep. Yep. And who do you want to work with? You know, just that, you know, if you go out to like you know, major companies, big companies, and you look at their websites, you have absolutely no sense of who they are. Right. But with social media, you get to post things that reveal who you are, what you value, who you work with, what do you wear to work. I mean, you're, by showing your workplace, what people are wearing, you know, photos of birthday parties. We had a chili cook-off one afternoon, and we must have posted like 30 photos from the chili cook-off. That was just an in-house thing. Yep. And what's surprising is the number of people who look at it, look at the photos and comment on it. Yep. And so they're connecting with you. And, and all that builds is a greater affinity between you and your clients and your prospects. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, man, we're into 30 minutes now, um, but this was awesome, dude. This was, this was um, you were top notch. Uh, the, uh, my internet, it leaves a little bit to be desired. So, you know, every, every once in a while, we sounded a little bit like Max Headroom, but I think, you know, we didn't lose it all together. And, and you know, being that this is our first official one, maybe people will uh, forgive us as we get better. But so let me ask you this. Yeah, if you had to leave them with one final thought, what, uh, what would you tell people about Pinterest? I would say, get an invitation, get on, and play. And it's yeah. the same advice I give for every platform. Uh, don't dismiss it, try it. Right on. Take, take a look, and because I think you'll be surprised at the, the impact you can have if you think a little creatively on what visual images you can share with your customers. Yeah, I love it, man. All right, well, this was sweet. Will you do another one of these with me sometime? Sage, you know it. All right, man. All right, it's John Haney, Sage Lewis, and we're gonna have to come up with a name for this show or something. I don't know. That's this weekend's assignment, Sage. All right, a name. We're gonna get a name and some fancy like little uh, intro, and then we can have an outro. All right, John, you're the best, man. Thanks a ton, and um, until next time. All right, Sage. See ya.